for me, coming back and doing a residency was a breath of fresh air. Um, it, it was a decision I made knowing that there'd be a ton of, tons of work and maybe even a little more for me uh, after having my year of experience working in a retail setting. But for me, it was to open doors and to find, uh, get a connection with the patients, something that I felt that I wasn't getting and something for me that helps fuel my practice, being able to interact directly with patients and deal with them on a one-to-one -one basis. And I feel that residency is definitely preparing me for that and getting me ready to be the practitioner that I'd like to be. I really think that it gives you an extra year to get some more training in different clinical areas that you can explore during your residency year. And I've had a lot of mentors who have gone through residency who kind of served as role models for me throughout my time in school. First reason that I chose to do one is the educational value. Uh, they say that a year of residency is equivalent to about three to five years of clinical practice. And so I thought that the educational experience that I would get from a residency uh, would help me as a professional um, and it would also help me provide better care for my patients. Uh, second reason I really chose to do a residency is because I was really interested in things like teaching someday, um, in clinical practice, and, and really as it stands right now you kind of need to do a residency to enter into those areas. I chose to do a residency because I knew that was the most direct route to the job that I wanted. I knew that I wanted to have a job where I was in direct patient care, most likely in a clinic setting. At that time, that's what I thought I wanted to do. And also, I wanted to teach, and I knew that in order to do that, and do that right you know, soon, that I needed to do a residency in order to get there. I think that something that made me stand out during the process of being selected for residency was my enthusiasm. Um, I have a definitive plan for what I want to do, so I have like an end goal and I'm excited about the end goal. I really want to be where I want to be. And I think that I have shown that through leadership um, qualifications as well. So knowing that this is where I want to go, I've also used my energy to get other people excited about pharmacy through organizations and taking leadership roles such as presidential roles. Not that you have to have those to get a residency, but I think that it helps show your enthusiasm for the profession of pharmacy as a whole. A couple of things that I think made me stand apart is that I'm very enthusiastic and I really wanted to show that through my interview process. So, you know, everybody can look great on paper, but when you have your interview, that's really your time to shine. So make sure that you know why you want to do a residency and express your enthusiasm and passion for pharmacy during your interview. I tried to gain a lot of different experiences as I went through my graduate curriculum. So things like volunteering, um, participating in student organizations, act, being active in leadership roles when you have those opportunities presented to you, um, being involved in research if that's available, all of those things I had some hand in during my experience, a little bit more in some cases, a little bit less in others. But the main takeaway is that it helped make me a more rounded candidate and I think that that's what they really valued. Some things that made me stand out, I think, to residency directors were um, the fact that I, I worked really hard on my rotations, and I think that's uh, one of the things that kind of gets missed along the line is that pharmacy is such a small world, and everybody knows everybody, so maybe you did a rotation at a hospital that doesn't have a residency program, uh, but that person uh, probably knows somebody who does. So the residency programs that you apply for uh, are going to call your rotation spots and see what kind of person you were. Uh, did you work hard or not? So I think that was one of the biggest things that uh, maybe give me a leg up is, is to work really hard on rotations. Suggestions that I have for you would be sitting down and thinking about what you would like. Think about the career where you would like to be, and it doesn't have to be something specific, but get an idea. You know, do you want to deal with your patients on a one-to-one -one basis, daily, see them, you know, your interactions with them. You know, think of the setting that you would like to be at, um, and let that kind of shape where you're going. Um, you don't have to have that clear picture, but have an idea of where you'd like to be. And then as you search, look into residencies that will prepare you for that. Are you looking for something that's more of a teaching focus and preparing for something along those lines? 
look at stuff that has a teaching certificate program and something that you can focus on there. I would say, um, you know, start early and do your homework. So be prepared um, for the residency sites well before you're even at that interview process. So start your first year if, if you think that's something that you want to do. Start researching sites. Start finding mentors on campus, people that have gone through residencies, people at the sites or, or doing jobs that you think you might want to do. And start making those connections and, and prepare yourself to where when it comes to you know fourth year and it's time to start putting applications in that, that you know where you want to go and you know where you want to be. I would say first sit down and decide where you want to be next year. If you're willing to move or if you want to stay locally, that will help you geographically uh, figure out your options and that's where I started. I knew that I wanted to stay in Cleveland, Cleveland is home, so I looked in the Cleveland and Akron area. I used the ASHP resi residency directory online um, as my tool to find the programs that were local and then find their directory contact information. Uh, go to their websites directly, find the appropriate contact people, and get information that way. Suggestions I have to help students along the residency road is, is I think, to start early. I think the earlier you can start on the process, uh, the better off you'll be. Uh, try to narrow down uh, the kind of programs that you're looking for, the kind of rotations you want to get out of the residency, and that will help you narrow some of that down uh, to certain programs that may only have uh, certain uh, rotations available. Well, the opportunity that the residency provided me with was ultimately getting me the job that I wanted. So through the residency, I was able to get a job in ambulatory care. So right now, I am a clinical pharmacy specialist in ambulatory care at Alliance Community Hospital. I'm currently running an anticoagulation clinic, so seeing patients on a daily basis. And my primary role is to expand that, so I'm hoping to move that into to different services, diabetes, uh, chronic disease management clinic. So the residency got me the job that I wanted and, and with that I'm also shared faculty with the university and I, I knew going into residency that I had a passion for teaching so ultimately residency got me the job that I wanted. I am where I am today because I did do a residency and currently I just started a position that's a shared faculty uh, position with Neomed and also Mercy Medical Center in Canton. So uh, my job right now is to start the antimicrobial stewardship program down there and I wouldn't have been able to do that and have uh, kind of this dual life of also being a teacher and a, a practicing pharmacist uh, without a, doing a residency. I would suggest to sit back, think about yourself. What do you want to do? What type of practitioner do you want to be? And let those decisions and that uh, time of soul searching kind of guide your decision as to where you would like to apply what programs interest you, and let that be your, your, uh, your guiding compass to let you know where you want to go. If you are interested in applying for a residency, I encourage you to become involved in professional organizations. This is the number one way that you are going to meet lots of people and be able to give them the exposure to yourself. And by doing this, you also expand your ability to operate in group environments. So that's a really important thing when you think about being on a healthcare team that you can personally interact with all types of different personalities and get your point across because when it comes down to it, when you're the pharmacist and you're on a team and you need to call somebody and make a recommendation, that person might be really nice, that person might be really mean, and you have to have the skills to get your point across so that you can keep your patients safe. Try to make yourselves as well-rounded as possible. Get involved in things that will make you a better candidate, make you stand out more. Um, because not only are these things gonna be great to throw on your CV, they also really help you as a professional. And when you walk into one of these roles, you have that experience to back up things you do. Um, so it'll, it'll help you making decisions day to day. Maybe you'll be involved with an activity that you have some past experience doing just because you've tried to make yourself a better candidate and you have all that already under your belt. My one suggestion to current students seeking a residency would be to find a mentor. Uh, find a mentor, somebody doing things that, that you want to do and find out how they got there. And, and it doesn't have to be one person because you know, you might not know what you want to do, but find people that have walked the path that you think you might want to walk and they'll help you. 
One suggestion I would give for students is to uh, work hard at all times, uh, even if it's an ippy rotation and you're out there. Uh, remember, pharmacy is, is such a small world. Everybody knows everybody, uh, and people do talk. So uh, it's amazing who knows uh, who knows who in the in the small pharmacy world. Uh, so I would say work hard wherever you're at, um, and also uh, make sure that you know you're working hard in school you know, with your, your grades, keeping those up, because those will eventually um, come into play when it comes to the residency search. My experience as a resident has actually been very good so far. Um, it's nice because, as opposed to just walking out into practice, you still have all the responsibility of being a pharmacist, but the difference is you have a pretty strong support network beneath you, and they're actually help they're, they're there to help you move up to a level where you feel comfortable practicing. It's a lot about flexibility, time management, um, and being prepared to have a busy schedule, work long hours, and get up the next day and, and do it all over again. It's been a good experience. It's been busy, and there have been days when I think everybody goes through and you kind of second guess yourself and wonder, you know, was this really what I wanted to do? And those are few and far apart, but. Um, in the end, it's worth it. I can see myself growing as, as a professional, as a clinician, and becoming more and more each day the practitioner that I'd like to be. My experience has been great. Um, I am very, very happy with my choice that I made for residency, and it's just been flying by. Um, every month you get to do something different, so uh, it's similar to your fourth year, but it's a, a much more extensive, and you're actually a real professional now, so you have your license, but you have a lot of new experiences, and you go through the process with a co-resident or many co-residents, and so far it's just been everything that I expected. I want to work in emergency medicine and so for me I feel that it's important that I do a PGY2 so I will do be pursuing that and then in the second year of residency just like in the first year about halfway through the year you start interrogating places to see who's going to have a job available make sure that you use every network opportunity that you can so go to as many um, professional organizations as you can I encourage you not to sit with people that you know, go and talk to people that you don't know because that's how you build a network and that's how you may hear about jobs because the jobs that you want may not be posted. They may be something that you hear about from other people that come through your networking. I'm con hopefully continuing on to a PGY2, um, which is an extra year of training that you can do after your first year of residency um, to help prepare myself better for my hopeful shared faculty career upon graduating my second year of residency. What I would like to eventually do is end up in a position where I am in clinical practice, but I'm also uh, working part-time at a university um, teaching. So they have those shared faculty positions, and one of the great things about a residency is when you've completed one, you can uh, move into a job where you can teach part-time and practice part-time, so you get the best of both worlds. I think that Neomed helped prepare me for residency by giving me a very broad knowledge base, by teaching me to interact in a healthcare team, and by having faculty that are very, very supportive and that will help you along in your search for residency. Neomed provided the perfect environment for preparing for residency. Um, we have several faculty members here and staff members who were always more than helpful in the residency search process and the interview process. Um, and one thing that I did during my P4 years, I actually had an academic rotation right around the time that I was starting to apply for residencies. And during that month, all of the faculty were more than supportive and took extra time out to help us prepare for the interview process too. I think Neomed helped prepare me for residency uh, mostly by just having uh, the faculty here. Uh, the people that I was able to, to identify people early that were in roles that I wanted to be in and kind of leaned on them and, and used their, their wisdom to help me get to where I wanted to be. So the faculty is definitely the strength of that and that's how they helped me prepare. What they're known for is the interprofessional or interdisciplinary curriculum. So working with med students, pharmacy students, um, helps prepare you for once you get out in the real world, how to work with the physicians that you're rounding with, how to approach them, what, what things they're being trained on and how they look from their perspective, but applying your perspective. And I think having a curriculum where you're 
learning in the same classrooms together and applying that knowledge. And then when you get out, I think it helps, helps you work better together in the actual practice setting.